So after mostly a year under Gilandayo, he went to study sculpture in Medici Gardens under the guidance of Bertoldo di Giovanni. In the Medici Gardens, Michelangelo had access to a large collection of ancient Roman sculptures. He studied the sculpture closely and he began to develop his own unique style. He was also influenced by the work of Donatello, whose sculptures were known for their realism and expressiveness, and his work began to reflect these influences. His early sculptures, such as the Battle of Sintos and the Bacchus, are known for their realism and dynamism. He also began to use perspective in his sculptures, which was a radical innovation at that time. And all of these expertise were just down into the making of the two masterpieces of today, the Pieta and the David. The Pieta was commissioned by French Cardinal Jean de Pierre, who sought political reconciliation between Italy and France. The sculpture was a gift for the marriage alliance between a French noblewoman and César Portier, the son of Pope Alexander VI. Placed in Chapel of Santa Petronella, the Pieta symbolized French presence in Rome. Michelangelo's religious faith inspired the sculpture, depicting a youthful Mary holding the crucified Jesus. The artwork harmoniously blended Renaissance ideals with Gothic subject matter, creating a unique sensation. As for the sculpture itself, we are just starting. Crafted in 1499, Michelangelo's Pieta stands tall at 1.74 meters or 5 foot 8 and spans 1.95 meters or 6 foot 4 in width, meticulously carved from Italian marble. Presently housed within the Vatican Museum, the sculpture captures Mary in a seated posture, enfolded in robes gently cradling the lifeless form of Jesus. Jesus' legs find support in his mother's arms, his head tilted back, resting on her shoulders. The bogonant scene depicts the aftermath of Christ's crucifixion, portraying the figures in deliberate disproportions. Jesus appears diminutive, while Mary is markedly larger and retains her youthful countenance, far removed from the traditional image of a mature mother that she appears in in a lot of other works. The sculpture takes a pyramid-like shape, with Mary's head as its apex. The composition widens to accommodate the drapery enfolding Mary's legs. Her face delicate and serene contrasts sharply with the robustness of her figure. These deliberate disproportions stem from the technical challenges a woman would face when cradling a grown man. During the Renaissance, such artistic liberty with proportions were commonplace, making be it his design while unique, not considered unusual for its style. This masterpiece is specifically crafted to evoke profound sorrows in its viewers, depicting the heart-wrenching image of a mother mourning her child. Even though this loss is framed as a divine sacrifice, the sculpture's emotional depth aligned with Michelangelo's broader body of religious work, marking it as one of the most compelling depictions of a biblical scene ever created. In its somber beauty, the Pietas resonates with the viewer, capturing the essence of human grief and spiritual transcendence. And on the occasion of mentioning the broader body of Michelangelo's religious work, he lies between our hand the David, one that its origins trace back to the early 15th century, when members of the influential woolen fabric guild in Florence planned a grand project for the cathedral buttresses. Donatello actually initiated the series in 1410 with a clay sculpture of Joshua, and in 1463, Agostino di Dolcio was tasked with creating a clay statue of Hercules, potentially overseen by Donatello in 1464. The opera commissioned Agostino to sculpt David. A massive marble slab from Carrara in northern Tuscany was delivered for this purpose. Agostino made some initial progress, outlining draperies and shaving parts of the sculpture. However, the project faced setbacks, including the unfortunate death of Donatello in 1466. After a decade-long hiatus, Antonio Rosalino took over the incomplete work. Unfortunately, his contract was terminated, leaving the marble block neglected in the cathedral's workshop yard for 26 years. This hiatus caused concern among opera officials due to the difficulty, labor, and expense associated with transporting the massive marble piece to Florence. And by 1500, the sculpture was described in workshop inventories as a particular figure of marble named David, severely blocked out and recumbent. 
And then came Michelangelo. Unlike previous works by artists like Verrocchio, Donatello, and Andrea di Castagno, where David being portrayed proudly over Goliath's skull, in 1504 Michelangelo's David was standing at 17 foot tall, capturing him at the moment before the battle. He appears tense, prepared for war, his veins protruding, forehead furrowed, and neck tense. The sculpture conveys David's nervous anticipation, a stark contrast to the confidence seen in earlier redemptions after his triumph. Michelangelo skillfully employs contrapposto, a hallmark of classical sculpture. To create a sense of movements, David's twisted body suggests he is about to spring into action. This positioning, where one leg bears the weight of the body while the other is extended, accentuates the sculpture grace and dynamism. Noteworthy is Michelangelo's deviation from conventional proportions. While David's head and hands are disproportionately large, his genitalia are modest. Possibly in adherence to the classical Greek ideal of youthful nudity, the sculpture's original placement on the cathedral roofline might explain these alterations, ensuring visibility from below. Everything is calculated here. And to put the sculpture and its making into more context, the political scene in Florence further enriched the statue's significance. David had long been a symbol of political power in the city. When Medici family was expelled, the Signoria claimed that Atello's bronze David, placing it in Palazzo della Signoria's yard, asserting the city's republican government. Michelangelo's David also positioned nearby, served as a political statement. This association led to attacks on the statue, demonstrating its potent symbolism. In essence, Michelangelo's David stands as a masterful representation of anticipation and tension, capturing a pivotal moment in the biblical narrative while reflecting the political complexities of Renaissance Florence.